My name is Denise. I am a shaman, a midwife, an educator, and I am getting ready to be on the Prosperity Show. Come and join me. Welcome to yet another transformative episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today we have a truly remarkable guest who is a true guide on the path of holistic wellness and healing. Dennis, how are you doing today? I am doing well. So wonderful to be here, especially, you know, my time, 10.30 p.m. Your time is lunchtime, but Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, if you really look at it, time is a human construct. You know, we could be in the same place, you know, experiencing the same thing. It's just maybe somebody decided to sell Rolexes and called it time. If you, that is true. You see now. So for those that are meeting Denise for the first time, Denise is the visionary creator behind the Healers Realm podcast. And it is presented by the Shamanic Group. Now, Denise empowers individuals with practical tools and insights to embark on their unique healing journeys. Now, she's not just a grad student, but a dedicated explorer of the mind, body, and medicine, specializing in integrative wellness coach coaching. And now, let's dive into her captivating journey of self-discovery and learn how she's impacting lives. Denise, I've already welcomed you to the show. Could you share with our audience what actually inspired you to embark on the journey of energy healing and shamanic practices? Well, wow, that's that's like going to be forever for me to tell you that. But um, I started energy healing when I didn't even know what I was doing. It was just something that was naturally um, some a gift of mine. And um, it was back like around 2006. And um, I was just learning how to heal myself and learning how to also help to bring in other people along with that in my journey. So to make them have a staple in my journey. And so um, how I got on the shamanic path is I didn't ask for it. <laughs> I wasn't seeking it. <laughs> I did not even know what it really was. I heard about it prior to. And basically, I had a couple of dreams that told me that I was a shaman. And then I also had an experience that scared the mess out of me. <laughs> it, it didn't really scare me, but it was like, okay, let me go look up what shamanism is. And I was walking through an airport and literally it was just like, nobody was there. It was like almost midnight and nobody was in the airport, but I started to hear clapping and, you know, whistling and stuff like that and shaman coming through and I'm looking around and nobody's there. And I'm like, okay, let me go look up this shamanism thing. Cause I have no idea what it is. I got an audio book on it and I'm like, wow, this is explaining my my whole entire life and the events that have occurred in my life. And ever since then, I've been um, okay with this, this experience, this journey and who I am. Fantastic. And, and thank you so much for sharing that. Now, in 2006, like you mentioned, you went on, you started and embarked on this journey so, to learn how to heal and you wanted other people to be a part of this. Can you just maybe paint a picture of what life was up until this moment? Well, actually, you know, the journey really started before 2006. 2006 is just when around the time when I started with energy healing. I did eventually become a Reiki master in uh, 2000 and, um uh, 20, and then also got initiated into the Kuro tribe, which is an energy um, heal. They they do energy healing as well. That's what they practice, their main modality. And that was back in 2022, I think it was, yeah, last year. And so my actual journey started when 
I've been, a, I'm a, also a seer and I've been seeing since I was a little girl, since I was like about five years old. And I felt like at that time it was a really cool gift. Oh, wow. You know, I, I have these dreams and the next day they come true, you know, who, who wouldn't think that was cool. Right. You know, exactly how it was. And like when it's happening, in the middle of it happening, I'm like, oh my gosh, I dreamed that. You know, it's almost like a deja vu, but it's just, it's a lot more extensive than a deja vu. And so it started off with dreams and then it, it, it went into visions. So um, now I have lesser dreams, but when I do have dreams, they're very, very vivid. I mean, they're <laughs> it's a lot going on. It was almost like I'm, I could just touch the dream. I'm there. But now I have more visions. And in those visions, I um, I see things that deals with the, the collective, um, especially dealing with healers, um, people that are called in this assignment at this particular time to uh, raise the consciousness of of, of humanity, as well as heal parts. And, and I say parts of the body, because that's exactly what I see it as, is that we're a body and we function in different parts. And at this particular time, it's time to heal certain parts of that body. And so that's what's happening right now. And that's kind of like what my assignment is, is to help people along the way of that, right. as well as help myself. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that. Now, I'm I'm intrigued, um, Denise. You know, you said you started seeing these, uh, you know, visions and having these sort of uh, dreams at a very, very young age. And obviously, as a kid, you would have had to talk to the people around you. What sort of perception did people have when young Denise was trying to tell people, hey, I'm seeing these things, this and this is happening. What what, what did the people around you um, interpret them as or take it as? Well, I'm so glad that you asked that because I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> it was my little secret, my little kept secret. And the reason being is because I had a very, very challenging um um, challenging childhood. I basically was in foster care for the majority of my childhood, um, 11 homes uh, in total before I emancipated at the age of 18. Um, I dealt with a lot of abuse, um, not only from um, my biological parents, but also from, you know, uh, people that were also supposed to be mandated, you know, by the court or by the system to take care of me and protect me. And so um, I was very introverted and I stayed to myself. And um, so when I had these things happening, it never um, occurred to me to tell anybody because it was like nobody outside of myself was safe. So I kept those secrets for a long time. And I'm glad I did because I feel as if that had I would have told certain people, it may have told put me on a totally different path and made my life a lot more complicated. Absolutely. And um, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, obviously, that would have contributed to who you've become now. But would you say maybe you experiencing those dreams would have been some sort of an escape that you then felt connected to something that was um, not what you were experiencing at that particular time? You know what? That's a good point. But I think it was, I feel like, okay, let me just tell you about an experience that I have. The dreams, not so much, but the experience that I had um, was around when I was five, maybe six, around that age. And I was in the foyer of my dad's um, condo, condo. And um, once again, I had a really challenging um uh, childhood. So my dad would stay in his room like the whole day, the whole day and night. And I would be in, you know, by myself and, uh, and I was his only child. So I didn't have anyone to play with. And so I remember, I think I was playing with like a, um, a train, uh, like toy thing that he bought me. And, um, all of a sudden that's when I first heard the, um, 
the the voice of God. And so as he's talking, he's like, Denise, you're, you know, basically he's telling me I'm special. I'm his child. And I was like, so you're, so Jesus is my brother, <laughs> you know? And I, you know, looking in hindsight, I wasn't really, my grandmother did take me to church and everything else, but I wasn't into, you know, religion. I was like going to sleep, trying to talk in between color at church. I was doing everything, but, you know, listening um, to what was going on. And so um, just knowing and and connecting the dots of who that voice was um, in that moment and connecting it as to being, you know, I, you know, Jesus was my brother. It was very profound, you know, um, looking back on that. But then he also told me that I had special gifts. And at the time, um, and this is what I also love about God for those who feel like, you know, they, they're never going to be able to connect or never going to be able to understand. Well, God always comes down to the, the understanding of what you can understand, you know, of your understanding. And so at that particular time, he was like, he told me I had gifts and I was like, yeah, like, you know, the Aladdin, <laughs> you know, cause that's what I was watching. I was watching the Aladdin movie at the time that was out and, um, he, he giggled like he like chuckled and he's like something like that and I was like and then ever since then I was like flying on my like acting as if I was flying on the the magic carpet but that was my escape it was my that moment in time was the time where I was saying oh wow you know I'm actually here for a purpose um I will say that before that moment or around that moment I wanted to commit suicide I was only like I, I remember, you know, at six years old, you know, me just looking down, my dad stayed on the sixth floor of his condo, uh, condominium. And I said, well, if I just jump, um, I wonder if it will hurt for me to hit the ground. And then I remember around seven years old, I wanted to give, um, I gave actually a friend of mine, the only friend that I had at that time. And she lived um, at the bottom floor of my grandmother's apartment, um, a knife. And I just told her, just stab me, I wanna die. And so, you know, from going from those experiences to that experience, it really saved my life. And around that time, and actually to be perfectly honest, Honest, I could say that I started the journey of energy healing pri prior to even 2006, because the first time I experienced um, elements as being a healing modality, like, you know, um, you have the water, you have the earth, you have all these things that, that could heal and could ground you, was when I was going around the lake um, uh, it, it, in order to get to my grandmother's house or vice versa to get to my dad's house, you have to kind of like go to, around this lake. And, um, I remember going around this lake and it, it was very, a traumatic situation that happened. My dad actually, uh, backhanded me and busted my, um, eye vessel, one of my eye vessels. So it was all red and all these things. And, you know, I'm trying not to cry because if I cry, then he's going to be even more upset with me. So I'm going around the lake. And the only thing that I could do was just look at the water. And I was looking at the water and it was soothing me. And ever since then, I know that when I need to be soothed, when I need to be calmed, I just go near the water and it really has that calming effect. Now, some people may have it around plants or around animals or putting their feet in the um, on the the um, grass or on the the dirt. I do that too. the The grass and the dirt is a very wonderful grounding um, tool that I use as well. But I think that's you know when I first started learning how to really heal myself is in those moments. Wow. <clears throat> Such a pity, you know, the people that were around you didn't nurture and cultivate these talents that they didn't get to see. And kudos for you, um, you know, having held on and kept going, you see, because because your journey is quite fascinating in as much as you, you just didn't stop there. You went on and um, got initiated into the Kero tribe in in peru um could you maybe walk us through how that has now influenced your approach to energy healing well 
let me just say this. Um, and I was just discussing this the other night. I had got a, like a surprise birthday party uh, thrown for me um, for from some of my friends, my shamanic friends. And it was just a wonderful experience. But I did bring this situation up with the Kural tribe. I was initiated into the Kural tribe, and I'm so grateful for that tribe um, and, and the things that they do and the things that they share, the teachings that they um, give to us. Um, one of the, <clears throat> there was a, a official initiation, um, and I feel like I was initiated twice, let's just say. So the first initiation um, was basically, we were at, you know, sitting around, there's more than one of, um, just me, it was more than just me, but we were sitting around as a group and we did this like a uh, ceremony in initiating us with our shamanic toolkits and, and everything else. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. They sung, we, uh, they prayed over us. I have a picture of, uh, of the, the mother <laughs> and she was putting her hand on my uh, forehead and uh was praying over me and everything else but one thing that was also an initiation that i really appreciate is is that that same mother um i was looking to buy some things that they were selling and so they were selling different um jewelries and you know just different tools different things that we could you know uh purchase and and then it will also help their community because you know they're from peru they're peruvian and it would help their community so i was all for buying it and so there was a bracelet that i was looking at and it, to me all of the bracelets were alike but to her, she sifted out all through the bracelets and chose this one bracelet. And she said, specifically, this bracelet, this is the only bracelet amongst all of the bracelets that has a butterfly in it. And I'm giving it to you. And so, um, you know, that was, for me, another initiation Um that was separate from the initiation that I had with the group. And it was very um, near and dear to my heart <laughs> to experience that. But I've also sat with other um, shamanic tribes, uh, such as uh, the Hunikuan. I sat with them for like three weeks. And they are also my guardians. I was re That was revealed to me in a dream. But the whole experience with the shamanic community has been such a blessing to me because, but it, they didn't show up. It's a, there's a saying that says the teacher or the, the teacher doesn't show up until the student is ready. Well, I wasn't ready for them to show up in my earlier years, but when I was ready, that's when they all started showing up in huge ways. And I couldn't be more grateful. Fantastic. And kudos for you to actually see that because you might actually be showing up for somebody using this video right now and they might not be seeing it. So it really takes a redemptive, um, you know, awakening inside for you to be able to see what is being presented to you as, as you mentioned that the teachers will now be showing up. Now, speaking of showing up for other people, you are now using um you know you know you're going from energy transmutation to guided meditations um and you're offering a, a wide range of healing experiences for people now how do these practices contribute to holistic wellness and what 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 can somebody expect from them so it's a twofold right now i'm going to school to get my phd in mind body medicine um the the thing is is that um i'm on the journey to get it and um it's the specialization that i'm specializing is in integrative wellness coaching as well as i just um have decided to change my um basically my major to uh psychophysiology um i the shamanic practices these are practices that have been for like centuries, not even just centuries, for thousands of years. These are, you know, tried and true, proven. Um, but when it comes to evidential proof, um, 
there's a little bit on the there's a little bit of proof on the table not so much as how it's proof in you know conventional medicine and so my goal is to um i'll never share the secrets of shamanism <laughs> but just to share the abilities in a person to be able to heal themselves and to be able to see themselves for who they really are um, is something that I desire to share. I feel like people are stressed out because they don't know their identities. They're stressed out because they don't find they can't find their place in in society, in the world, in this this time, this era, and they're really stressed out and they're going through the same cycles over and over again, not knowing how to break them. And stress makes you to have, and this is evident, uh, uh, proven by research, stress makes you to have certain illnesses, certain diseases, such as uh, heart disease, uh, um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, all these different kinds of diseases, hypertension, even um, lupus could be connected to stress. All these different kinds of diseases can be connected to stress. But if we're able to reduce our stress, and this is what my mission is, is in um, integrating shamanic practices, other different healing modalities, and also educating people on these different kinds of stressors, these different kinds of uh, symptoms that they may have, and also the diseases that are connected to the stress, it could help them to live happier and healthier lives. Um, applying these things, knowing what to ask, even just knowing what to ask your doctors when you're going to, to go see your doctor, knowing what kind of doctors you should be talking to. Um, and one of the reasons why I did go on this journey where I decided to change my major to psychophysiology is because um, that I had had a health issue and my health issue um, was eight years long. <laughs> and basically it was, I had three younger children, uh, one child and then uh, twins was my last two children. And um, so I have five in total, but these three children that I had, I had three different pulmonary embolisms in less than two years. Um, and it was related to um, birth. It was, you know, related to uh, being pregnant. And so during that time, yes, you know, I went through the, the, um, all the things that I needed to do. I had like an emergency surgery to, um, bust the clot so that I wouldn't die and all these different kinds of things that I did. I was on blood thinners, but the problem was, is that the doctors did not really, um, follow up. Um, I did not know to follow up. I did not know what questions to ask and the doctors some of the doctors were not fully updated on the resources and kinds of uh, uh, procedures that they could do in order to help alleviate what was going on with me. I was having a lot of problems with breathing and everybody was telling me that I was going to is just take these blood uh, thinners and lose weight. That's all we could do. And so it took me going and having pneumonia and RSV back in December of 2022. And um, from there, I was able to speak with uh, the person that was actually over me, my case, um, was a doctor who had a holistic approach. He was a doctor that looked at the whole person. He actually did tests. He ran tests. He, he asked me questions and Therefore, he guided me to a pulmonologist. From the pulmonologist, the pulmonologist did more tests, and I finally was able to get the um, the procedure that I needed to have done. I was finally able to get answers, and I had to have basically, it's not called open heart surgery, but for the sake of not saying this long named word that I, I still don't know how to pronounce, I'm just going to say open heart surgery, where they had to open me up, sternum and all, and pretty much do a 12 hour surgery, removing um, this. I would call it a calcified, you know, uh, clot because it was, it was not, um, it was really hard. It wasn't just, you know, 
uh, regular clot. So they removed that, um, sewed me back up, and now I could breathe like none of this had have ever happened before. But it took all of that. It took me being on oxygen for uh, five months of my life um, at home and having to have an oxygen tank where I went, wherever I went to have this to um, be taken care of. So now I really want to educate people and also give them um, different healing modalities, integrative wellness, integrative medicine that could help them to live better lives and help them to be more informed so that they could help themselves as well as their families and communities. Wow. I mean, <laughs> your personal story and just how you overcame this health challenge is very inspiring. And thank you so much for sharing that. Now, that obviously involved you going through your own sort of personal healing journey and it actually shaped um, your understanding of maybe energy blockages. I mean, you would have had physical blockages in, but that that could have been energy that was blocking and maybe their connection to overall well-being. Could you maybe just touch up on that a little bit for, for the uninitiated to understand what that actually means? Oh, yeah. And that's another thing that I talk about is, is that um, it's very interesting because I did have huge blockages, huge blockages. And it's just also interesting because of the dynamic of my giftings. Um, I could tell that I was blocked, but when dealing in my power and my giftings, um, I'm, I was still a very powerful, I guess you would say, uh, shaman. And so um, it was still, I was still seeing, I was still able to do energy healing. I was still able to do, you know, transmutation and all of the things, but I was blocked. Now, let me just say this. It's, it's very, it's very real to be blocked, um, especially when you're, when you're, it comes to your breath. Breath work is the key to life in so many different ways. Of course, you know, we stop breathing, we stop living, right? But it's more than that. It's more than that. If you do not know how to breathe um, efficiently, then you could have issues. You could have issues with your memory. I was having issues with my memory because of the lack of oxygen that I was getting. Um, when you're not able to breathe, it creates stress. It creates stress. Stress also can be um, uh, thick in your blood and cause you to have clots because of stress. All these different kinds of things were happening because of the blockage. I was, it was an ongoing cycle. I was underneath a whole bunch of stress. I was not understanding what was going on. I was losing my memory. I was losing my strength, my energy. Um, what would have, like, for instance, even though that I could do energy healing and even though that I could, you know, do all of the other things that I was doing as far as my, my healing gifts and modalities, I was physically drained more when I did it because I was blocked. Once I got unblocked, there was a lot of things that made more sense, um, spiritually, of course, and also physically. And um, connecting the dots and also knowing how to transmute that energy instead of having a sad story. My story is amazing. It's incredible. It's my goodness. It's like, wow, <laughs> I was once bound, but now I'm free kind of, you know, situation here. And um, but it was the blockage was the reason why that I have such a profound story. If it wasn't for that blockage. Um, I would have never changed my major. I would have never been so interested and intrigued in psychophysiology and 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 especially connected to the stress response. Um, and and all of the things that are pertaining to our well-being, our whole body, our whole whole holistic body, when you're talking about the body, mind, and soul and spirit, you're talking about those are the things that are, are, are very important. If your spirit is out or blocked in some kind of way, you could feel it in your physical being. If your physical being is blocked, you could be blocked spiritually. Getting those blockages taken care of is just going to help you to easily flow through life and have a better life. 
Absolutely. I mean, seriously, Denise, every answer that you're giving us is an episode in and of itself. So I'm really grateful that, uh, you know, we're sharing this time together, you know. So most of our audience is, you know, in the business sort of realm and they might be thinking, oh, maybe that's just a Denise kind of thing that's just happening. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, you've mentioned um, the power of transmutation I think twice I had a tally and three times or four times uh, could you just maybe explain this concept and how it can actually benefit small to medium business owners okay so one of the things that uh, I I know as a business owner is, is that when you have blockages physically um, spiritually or mentally, you'll, you could have blockages in your finances. The money will not flow. The clients will not flow. There's a lot of things that can be blocked. Your, your creativity juices <laughs> will not flow. So blockages, removing the blockages and understanding why you are blocked is very important for your business. As far as transmutation goes, I love transmutation. Transmutation, I've been transmuting for many, many years. Um, I, 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 I have gotten up the courage to call myself a master transmuter. And let me just tell you why transmutation is very important for your business. A lot of times when things happen, um, the first thing, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I was having these headaches and um, they just, you know, the first thing that I did is, oh, I'm, you know, one thing that I do not like is pain. I want to alleviate the pain. So I took some, um, some, some, some pain medicine and um, before, you know, I, I, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about why am I in this pain? What's going on? You know, how, when am I having this pain? I didn't ask any of these questions. What is very important for us business owners to do is ask the questions as to why this is happening. And it can, maybe, it may be a system that you don't have, but maybe it's a spiritual blockage that you may be going through. It's a physical blockage that you may be going through that's causing you to have blockages in your business. In order for you to find that out, and once you do find that out, there's a lot of things that you could do to transmute your story, to make it into being such a beautiful experience that will help other people to succeed as well. You help your clients to succeed, help your clients to even like you better because they've seen how you've transmuted a what could have been negative into a positive. Fantastic. And thank you so much for bringing that to light because some people might just be thinking, nah, I, I don't think that sort of aligns or that sort of uh, resonates with where I'm at. But you, you're you absolutely right. You know, if you're blocked and you, you never know what's stopping people from ringing you or just really connecting with people that might lead you to the next thing and to the next thing. So from what you're saying, aligning and thriving in business obviously is crucial i mean you had to then undergo surgery and get cut out for 12 hours i mean we are not going to be able to do that could you maybe share with us some practical tips on how business owners can maybe consciously align themselves and start creating success in their ventures yes number one is really find out why you are here. A lot of times we go into business because it's, it's you know, I mean, who doesn't want to be prosperous? <laughs> who, doesn't, who doesn't want to be prosperous and successful and financially, you know, there, you know, like you've made it? Who doesn't want that? But at the same time, are you fulfilled? Are you every day of your life? Is it an amazing day because you're doing exactly what you desire to do? Or are you doing this and you're stuck in something that you don't want to be stuck in and you're trying to figure out how to get out of this cycle? Whether it be starting up a different business, whether it be reimagining yourself in your business and making your business be the exact business that you desire to have. Um, so finding who you are, why you are. Another thing that you could do is um, utilize breath work. 
find a breath, a breathing um, technique that works for you. There's different kinds um, that you could utilize and, and do breath work on a daily basis. Meditation. Meditation is so important. I lead guided meditations all the time. I've been meditating for years. And when I tell you <laughs> that the meditations have kept me calm when I should have been you know, <laughs> crazy. The meditations have kept me having things come into my um, experience that helped me to be successful and prosper and also helped me with my own health. Um, so meditations are very good and meditations could also help you to gain clients. Um, another thing that I would suggest is to journal. And I know that this sounds strange, <laughs> but you never know where your story may take you. You never know when you may be saying something today that may be explode you in a good way <laughs> tomorrow. And so journaling doesn't have to always be writing. Some people don't like to journal and as far as writing goes. And it doesn't have to be every single day. But what you can do is do an audible journal. I have an audible journal that I do. Sometimes I do journal um, writing, but I have an audible journal that I do as well. And um, a lot of it tells a lot of my story so that I could go back and see myself as to how far I've came. So those are some things that I would suggest for the business owners to do. Fantastic. And if somebody is now really excited, um, you know, with regards to jumping on board, working with you or things of that nature, what will be the things that you will help them with and how can they get a hold of you? I could definitely help them with connecting their mind, body and spirit. Um, removing the blockages, helping them to be healthier. If you're not healthy in your physical life, you're not going to be healthy in your your financial. And and to be perfectly honest, you may not be here long enough to be healthy. And so, getting your physical health together is very important. Um, getting um, also getting a a, a plan together. Um, of what is going to help you to be successful. What One of the things that I don't do is a one size fits all. Um, as business owners, we all, as human beings, we all have things that may work for us and may not. And so I like particularly to develop a plan that works for that specific person. Um, and so that's what I could help them with is finding their peace, finding their happiness and finding their identity and embodying who they're supposed to be in this life and in their business. Cool. And how can people get started? They could get started. Um, contact me at the Healers Realm um, on Facebook, um, on Instagram as well, the Healers Realm. Um, I have a podcast the healer's realm as well. And also you can reach out to me by email at tranquility at the shamanic group.com. Fantastic. I'll definitely make sure that all that information is in the show notes there so that people can actually get started um, with you. Now with what you're offering there, I don't know. It just feels like a sort of, initiation for the people that you're going to be working with you know you know when he started talking about that I'm, I'm of African descent right and back home um, when kids get to a certain age maybe 12 13 14 you get initiated into adulthood where you're basically tapped on the shoulder and told it's your turn to lead so you know for those that want to understand what that means is if you used to lie on the couch and then wake up in your own bed. Somebody had picked you up, put you in bed. When you've been initiated, if you, you lie on the couch, you wake up on the couch because you now have to look after yourself. You're an adult now. You have to look after your own self. And I find that in the Western culture, that is not in existence. Whereas we now have fully grown babies that are running companies, fully grown babies that are actually running countries um you know so to speak and um you had an experience with sort of initiation do you 
sort of maybe think what you're taking people through is maybe not necessarily calling it that, but can be an initiation which really gets people to step in to start uh, looking within and take control of who they are. I actually like that you said that because that also, yes, I do believe that that is exactly what I do. I'm an activator. I forgot. I, I I didn't mention that until now, but I'm also an activator. A lot of times when people work with me, they get activated in um, things that may have been, they're not able to move forward or they're not able to break a cycle. And um, so I help to activate them. And once they leave me, things just start happening <laughs> in their lives. And it's very interesting because on so many different occasions, I've, I've heard those things from um, people that I've worked with. And so um, I do believe that it's a somewhat of an initiation. And I feel like um, in life, we do need to go through initiations to get to the next level. It's almost like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm thinking of, you know, Super Mario Brothers, but, you know, you know, you have to defeat one boss to get to the next one and, you know, to the next level. And, you know, it's, it's, I feel like life is just like that. We have to, you know, go on ahead and defeat and, and overcome this cycle or this experience or this level in order to get to the next. And so that's what I'm going to help you to do is um, overcome, defeat and go to the next level. Absolutely. You know, you talked about Mario and I'm just thinking, you know, every level has its own little devils and they yes. get faster the higher you go. So, you know, you need to be um, sort of, yeah, like you say, initiated. But you also have taken this to a whole new level. You've been jumping out of perfectly moving planes um, <laughs> numerous times. Can you just maybe touch up on that and how that um, really, you know, li lights you up? Well, you know what? Let me just go back to last year. I the, this it all experience started when I I always kind of wanted to jump out of a plane for many years, but this experience really started in uh, when I went to Costa Rica and I did thirteen zip lines, and in that zip line, and that was the same time that. Um, um, the Kuro tribe, they came, um, a few of them came from Peru, Peru and we were able to meet with them and had that experience. But at the, when I was on a zip line, I, it was very devastating because just walking and trying to walk up the hills that you need to walk, I was completely out of breath. I barely, you know, go up those hills because I was dealing with the, the blockage that I had in my uh, lungs and in my right pulmonary artery. And um, I just said, I remember being on a zip line and I remember just being and laying <laughs> like kind of like here. And I said, I just want to live. I want to be healthy. I want to have a better life than this, you know. And so from there, and that was in February of 2022. I think it was 2020. Yeah, 2022. And so from there, I jumped out of the plane in October and I, I felt like that that was my initiation to do that, you know, my, you know, my go, go, you know, going forward, I'm able to go forward now to do jump out of the plane. And one of the things that I experienced when I was jumping out of the plane was fear. And um, last year was the year of embodiment for me. Um, every year I have a, um, you know, I see what the year is going to foretell for the, you know, for the people in this assignment. And so last year was the year of embodiment. This year is the year of birth and rebirth. And um, in October, I was still filled with a lot of fear. I had extreme, you know, fear of being myself, stepping out um, of my situation with my lungs, all of the things. And so um, I went on the, the plane. I don't even know why. I'm like, I went on a plane ride. And my, my friends, I have two friends that also jumped out of the plane. They're like, yeah, <laughs> you're going to have that moment. They didn't tell me what the moment was. And then, and then another friend was like, yeah, I thought I was going to, you know, be all elegant jumping out of the plane. And I'm like, just like a noodle, a wet noodle, just twirling through the air. <laughs> And we're just cracking up about the situation. And so when I was ready to jump out of the plane, I was fine. I was cool, calm, and collective until they said two minutes. And I was like, two minutes what? <laughs> like two minutes who? <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden, 
um, he said one minute and he opened up the door. And now mind you, there's only five of us in total in the plane. So it was me and my, the person that I'm connected with and the other jumper and the person that he's connected with and then the, the pilot. And so they had me by the door. Obviously they knew that I was going to chicken out and try to not jump. And they said, he's like, no, you got to jump. And I'm holding on to everything possible. Like, no, no, don't, no, I don't want to jump. And then finally, you know, he's like, no, you have to. And then the other guy is looking at me like, just jump. <laughs> so so I'm getting to the edge and I'm like okay I'm hearing the wind I'm seeing the bottom and he's like okay you know so he's like I'm on the count of three we're gonna jump and so all I just feel is rocking he didn't even count to three okay and then all of a sudden I'm just twirling through the air I'm like what is going on and so finally he pulls the like the parachute and so when he pulls the parachute I was like huh and I'm looking down and I'm like, wasn't that bad? <laughs> and the, the, the moral of the story is this. The most, um, I think the most dangerous for us, the most fearful moments is exactly when we're supposed to jump, when we're about to jump, when we're knowing we have to jump. And it's so scary. It's like, you know, the unknown, the the fear of looking down, you know, when you look down and some people are afraid of heights, you know, all of the things, the fear comes up. And right after we jump, it's like, wow, I was scared for nothing. I mean, yeah, maybe it was a little bit, you know, tough, you know, before the parachute opened up, but after the parachute opens up and it, it, it usually does, you know, it, it usually does, then it's, the most magnificent thing that I had ever experienced. And I was able to connect that to every single area of my life. Even right now, I'm going through something right now, some turmoil in my life. And I'm like, wow, the jump is the, the before, right before the jump is the most fearful time. And if we could just get over that, if we could just, you know, have courage, be courageous and be brave enough to overcome that then the rest is, man, the rest is good. It's history. It's wonderful. Absolutely. <clears throat> and thank you so much for taking us on that uh, whirlwind of a journey of you skydiving there. I, I think I think knowledge is underrated, um, you know, in these in this circles and in life as a whole. Because just imagine the guy who was strapped behind you, the instructor, every single day, that guy kisses his wife and kids and tells them I'm going to work. And he comes back home in time for dinner. So he knows that he's going to jump, come across five, four, six, uh, you know, fearful people. And then he's going to have to tell them it's okay. I do this every single day. So, I mean, that's just something, but, you having that in mind, you know, that knowledge and understanding, knowing what you know now, Denise, I want you to maybe visualize and see that little girl that was in the foyer who was sitting there either scared, nervous, and just looking to connect. That was Denise in the foyer. Could you tell me what you would tell her right now? Well, <laughs> you know, but, and, and I don't want to joke about this because it's not funny, but I am a person that uses humor and, and laughter um, as a healing tool. But so the first thing I would tell her, because I know that she'll get the joke, is don't jump. And um, the second thing I would tell her is that um, she is the gift. You know, even though that she has gift, she is the gift. She's the gift to herself. She's she's her hero and or she ro. <laughs> so that's what I would tell her. Wow. Wow. And kudos to you for having come full circle. And now you're helping those that might be caught up in cycles of their own doubt, or they don't know the delay between, um, you know, receiving and the time you ask, what would you advise 
um, you know, as a first step towards breaking free and maybe embarking on a journey of health and wellness to those people that have been watching this show with us? Do your own research. Like that, like the one thing that I feel like that we give too much credit to is other people. We put, we put our lives in other people's hands too many times. And this is a co uh, creative, a collaborative movement. It's not, uh, oh, I'm just going to allow somebody else to do it. We have to be active participants in the creation of our own lives. We have to co-create, we have to collaborate. And if you are working with somebody, and this goes for anyone in your circle, friends, family, um, doctors, lawyers, accountants, whoever it is, and they're not collab, you, it's not a collaborative, then um, you might want to think about changing that, you know, moving around, finding somebody that is going to be more collaborative. And because this is your story, you know, one of the things that I tell people is you have to be the main character in your own story. And a lot of times we make the disease the main character, the lack of finance the main character, the you know, the situations that we're going through, the main character, everybody else <laughs> is the main character, but us take back your power, take back your power and be the main character in your own story. Wow. I'm happy you used the words co-create because I think we've co-created something remarkable here in this episode here and uh but before we go you you mentioned something really interesting so you said last year was the year of embodiment this year is the year of rebirth what can we expect now from from denise in the future now that we have jumped on board your story and we're now a part of your journey so, well, you know, a lot of things that I'm doing is I am doing um, integrative wellness coaching. Now I've opened up the doors for that. And, um, but it's only for, you know, a select few, you know, depending upon where they are and what they want. But it's not just the coaching that they will get. They will also get um, different things that tools that they can utilize themselves. Because the whole thing is, is that you have to be self sufficient. You know, I could give you tools all day. I never want you to think that you need someone else but yourself. I just want to give you the tools so that you could see yourself and be able to achieve who you are. And so um, in my um, coaching programs, that's what you'll be able to do is, is that you'll be able to get app applicable tools that will help you on your journey. And as well as I'm doing more of my guided meditations that are open, they used to be closed um, and, and really secluded into a community where I am the community shaman, but now I'm opening the doors for my guided meditations for more people. And I'm also uh, in the process of creating a course that people could go through where they could also uh, gain tools and, and um, different things that will help them to make wiser choices about their well-being. Fantastic. Uh, in the name of the uh, best shaman I've met uh, in a very, very long time is... <laughs> <laughs> fantastic <laughs> i absolutely absolutely love what you've shared with us what you have brought to the table and what you have really um you know taken us through in in this um and um as i was about to say before you 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 cut me off with your laughter there um you know when the teacher has arrived um the, the student will 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 notice and i think our teacher has arrived and for those that are watching right now um you know it, it's been an absolute pleasure delving into the incredible journey of healing and self discovery with uh, denise and um i'd like to thank you know denise for her dedication to guiding others towards a holistic wellness and you know approach to prosperity 
um, in, in life because if you don't feel well, you're never going to do well. You know what I mean? Everything else works. Everything is connected. And if you're blocked in certain um, you know, facets, you really need to find people like Denise that can help you be, do, and have a happier existence. Now, thank you so much, Denise, for the time that you spent with us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. You have an amazing personality and show and your own experience was very inspiring to me. So thank you so much for giving me the honor to be here. Oh, I appreciate that. It's a good thing we're recording this. Otherwise, my kids were not going to believe that um, that's what you just said there. And to our listeners, if you're ready to step into your own tranquility and spiritual awakening, uh, just reach out to the shamanic group today. I will definitely put all the links to the podcast or to the courses that are coming in the future in the show notes uh, below. And remember, your time is now. I'd like to thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of the Online Prosperity Show. Um, help me thank Denise once again. Until next time, live with passion and a purpose. Bye for now.